Yitzchak's Yamsuf. And in the scripture, in the biblical text, we'll find more than 50 ref references to Yamsuf that describes it in detail and location and connection and so forth. And that's, that's what I call science, to take all these uh, references to this Yamsuf and see, see where it fits in. And there is only one answer to that question where it fits in, and that's the Gulf of Aqaba. Well, why is that? I could just take one example, uh, but there are more than 50 references. So just one example. King Solomon had his fleet in Yamsuf. And we know that King Solomon had his fleet in the Gulf of Aqaba. It should, Yamsuf should be close to Eden, which is the land just northeast of the Gulf of Aqaba. It should be directly east of Egypt, which the Gulf of Aqaba is. This is just a few uh, connections. But if you take all these references, you will end up with the Gulf of Aqaba. And that's interesting. Because if you cross the Gulf of Aqaba, you will, as it says in the Bible, come into the land of Midian. Yes, okay. And Moses was there in the land of Midian, and he, his uh, family grew up. Run away from Egypt. He, as you say, he, he did run away to, to Midian. Mm -hmm. And that was far enough to get off the influence of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So he could live with open identity in the land of Midian. Interestingly, in the Arabic sources, today, everyone knows that uh, uh, Moses was in the land of Midian. Uh, when they made investigations going back in time, 100, 2, 3, 4, 500 years in time, everyone marked the land of Midian where it is. They put Moses' well there. They put the land of Jethro there, the father-in-law to Moses, etc., etc., etc. So you are talking about present Saudi Arabia. Yeah, exactly. The east coast of the Gulf of Aqaba. That has always been called Midian. And today it's named Majan, meaning the same thing. So there it is. So that is the location because when Moses was, on the, Moses was on the mountain and he got the mission to bring out the people of Egypt, he should go back to the very same land, to the very same place, and they should worship there. That means that if you should look for the uh, Mount Sinai, you must go to the land of Midian. And then you can ask your questions if you are on the right place. I recall from the Bible that when Moses asked, what is the sign that you have spoken to me? Mm -hmm. God said to him, okay, this is the sign. When you take Israelites from Egypt, you will worship me at this mountain, yeah, exactly. in Midian. Exactly. And that's, to me, it's very obvious when you read the text. Mm -hmm. So then when I'm at the traditional Mount Sinai on the Sinai Peninsula, and I see that nothing fits. And I completely agree with scientists and other people that have said the same thing. My next question then is, well, if it's not there, where is it then? And then by reading the scripture in detail, you get a lot of uh, hooks where you can try to find out and fish, so to speak, in history. And then go to other places and suddenly a door just opens up and you see all the archaeology there. You see all the remains of the people. It's just like a flood that comes over you. So, where is the place of crossing? Well, the uh, uh, site of crossing is most likely what's today called Neveba. That's the only place where you can have these people, where it fits into the description of the place at the coast of the Gulf of Aqaba. And there it happens to be a kind of land bridge in these very, very deep waters, where you can just walk across if you just take away the water. Um, I've heard about the Pillars of Solomon. Yes, there were two pillars, uh, one on each side of this crossing, one in today's Saudi and one in Egypt. The one in Saudi was taken down and destroyed. The other one is still uh, standing on the Egyptian side. And that can also be connected to King Solomon, uh, at least um, as a theory. Is it still today possible to go and see the column, yes, the pillar? Yes, it stands there. Mm -hmm. But no one knows why it stands there. It just stands there. Thank you, Professor Muller. It has been a great pleasure to have you here with us. And uh, I understand that you are most 
willing to sell this book as much as possible for the benefit of people to know that the Bible is uh, also historically a fact book. Yeah. And the book can be found on the website, theexoduscase.org, and that's where it can be found. And uh, it's not normally distributed, but it's found all over the world, but uh, they normally go to the website. Olemme kiitollisia professori Möllerille, että hän tiedemiehenä on näistä asioista puhunut. Nimittäin useimmat uskovat kyllä on tyytyväisiä siihen, mitä he saavat hengellisesti, mutta jos seurakunnista ja muutoin, mutta jos meidän pitäisi voittaa todella suomalaisia päättäjiä ja tiedemiehiä, niin silloin meidän on kyllä osoitettava heille, että raamattu on myös historiallisesti totta. Ja tässä professori Möller on tehnyt erinomaista työtä ja suosittelen tätä tilattavaksi runsaan määrin.